Our next award goes to the Outstanding Doctoral and Research University Professor of the Year. And our winner is Stephen Pollack, Professor of Physics at the University of Colorado at Boulder. Introducing Professor Pollack is his former student, Akasha Cruz. Good afternoon. Again, my name is Akasha Cruz, and I'm a senior studying physics and mathematics at the University of Colorado Boulder. A year and a half ago, I had Professor Stephen Pollack for Classical Mechanics and Mathematical Methods 1. Being a sophomore in physics, I had only just begun to realize the complexity that I would soon face. Plenty of the upperclassmen had mentioned Professor Pollack to me previously, saying how he was an excellent professor and that I should take a chance with him, take a class with him if I ever got the chance. Professor Pollock challenged me in a way that I had never experienced before. He always encouraged me to delve a little bit deeper into a problem and try to explain to him exactly what I was thinking while solving problems during his weekly homework help sessions. At first, this was very intimidating and challenging, but once I realized that he was really trying to help me to reach a new level of understanding, I knew that it would only help me grow, even if the in-between was difficult. Classical mechanics is definitely not my favorite area of physics given my overpowering love for quantum mechanics. But if anyone... <laughs> but if anyone can make a topic interesting, and dare I say, even fascinating, it's Professor Pollock. In fact, this was my motto throughout the course. His philosophical insights into the wide range of topics we covered always generated excitement in lecture. I remember sitting on the edge of my seat, always waiting to watch him transform the simple and transparent into something deep and philosophically relevant to the physics at hand. I think Professor Pollock's Classical Mechanics and Mathematical Methods course will forever stand out in my mind because he is such a dynamic lecturer, presenting each new idea with accessible language, thoughtful creativity, and passion. <laughs> Professor Pollock's excitement towards physics, learning, and teaching is absolutely contagious. In 2003, Professor Pollock proposed the integration of the Learning Assistant Program and the use of interactive tutorials for CU's introductory physics courses based on previous work done at the University of Washington. The LA program is something that I cherish at CU because of its explorations of new avenues for learning and understanding the concepts of physics. I'm incredibly grateful to Professor Pollock for bringing this program to our department. I feel that I have become a much stronger physicist and learner thanks to Professor Pollock, and I can't emphasize enough the impact that he has made on my life. With that said, I am so honored being here today to watch my mentor, advisor, and one of the most creative, innovative, and truly unique minds I have ever known receive the National Professor of the Year Award for Research and PhD Granting Institutions. Please help me in welcoming Professor Stephen Pollock. Thank you, Akasha, and thanks to Case and the Carnegie uh, Foundation and all the supporters of this event. I'm very honored to receive this award. Let me start off with a question that I like to ask new physics graduate teaching assistants every fall. Think about it. True or false, teaching is an art, not a science. So when I pose this to the new graduate teachers, uh, we get a lot of discussion. It's usually very heated. There's uh, almost always a couple of graduate students who recognize that th this is a, a false dichotomy. Um, even then, the question generates a lot of interesting dis discussion and conversation. So I, I now want to share a little story with you that I probably shouldn't be sharing on this occasion. But it, it might help you understand my own shift uh, in thinking about that question. Uh, so I was a brand new assistant professor, 1994. Um, I was assigned to teach my first upper division class. I spent a lot of time thinking and uh, writing notes and finding good problems from the textbook. And during the term, right, I put my energy into it. I gave interesting lectures the best I could. And now and again, a student would ask a question. I would answer enthusiastically. And at the end of the term, I, I, I got my evaluations, and, uh, and they liked the class. So what's wrong with this picture? Um, well, for one thing, there were only three students in that class. <laughs> And they weren't always there every day. <laughs> and when I look back, you know, I, I sort of wonder, what was I thinking, right? This was such an amazing, spectacular, missed opportunity for engaging students. 
Yes, they said they liked it at the end. It reminds me a little bit about that old joke about the former Soviet Union, right? The workers pretended to work and the government pretended to pay. Um, <laughs> in retrospect, I, I had to ask myself, what did they learn? What did they take away from that course? And I didn't know the answer. My students graduated and they didn't stay in touch. So that might be a bad sign. Um, my exams and assignments were mostly procedural, and you know, I was thinking, did I change the way these students think about physics problems? Had they grown as physicists? Maybe, possibly, but I had a lot of nagging doubts. So I did what any self-respecting scholar does when you realize you really don't understand something you're involved with. You read, you, you find the literature, and uh, it turns out there's a lot of people who have been publishing journal articles and scholarly books for a long time about teaching and learning. Who knew? <laughs> so I discovered a community uh, engaged in physics education research first, and then I got the wonderful opportunity to become a Carnegie teaching scholar uh, back in 2001. And Lee Shulman and uh, many others there introduced me to this idea of a scholarship of teaching and learning. And uh, thus began my career shifting, um, yeah, change in my own answers to the kinds of questions that I started with. Right, is teaching an art or a science. So there's undoubtedly lots of art and craft to teaching, no question about that. But it is the scientific aspect, or maybe more appropriately, the scholarly aspect, which allows us to make systematic improvements and to make our changes public and to share and investigate and build and assess our educational practices. So I think it's this idea of the scholarship of teaching and learning which this award, the Case and Carnegie Award, is supporting and acknowledging. And it's this idea which changed everything for me about how I think about and how I practice uh, education. I have, I would say, learned that research and teaching are uh, deeply complementary activities rather than some sort of competition. My classes nowadays represent a, an attempt to create environments where students are engaging in material, uh, learning goals are collectively discussed and developed, and uh, impacts are assessed and disseminated. I do still get to teach upper division courses from time to time, and if you walk into one of those classes at CU today, um, you'll see some lecturing still, um, and also extended periods of students arguing with their peers and puzzling over concept questions and working in groups on challenge problems that are trying to connect the math and the physics formalism to common sense and understanding. Um, these are not always things that you expect to see in a technical upper division course, but I would argue that interactive engagement techniques are research-based and the evidence for their success is solid and, uh, and growing. Everybody likes to take this moment at the stage to um, thank the many people who make our work possible, and I'm going to try to shoot for the case record for thanking the most people. Uh, so, so I start with my wife, Rinska. Thank you so much. And thank you to my students, including Akasha, who really define for me what educational scholarship is, of course, ultimately all about. I don't teach physics. I teach students. Um, thanks to the colleagues in my physics education research group. Um, who helped me an awful lot, and the many, many more colleagues within my department who are devoting countless hours every semester discussing and debating learning goals and assessment measures and then opening up their classes and sometimes their minds to explore possibilities in practice. I thank the University of Colorado community and its administration, which supports and encourages not just classroom innovation, but also the disciplinary study of it. I thank the federal government, which provides it should provide more, but it's providing <laughs> support for educational research and development. I thank professional societies like the American Physical Society and organizations of universities which are promoting professional identity around teaching. Um, and perhaps most important for me, well, after my students, of course, um, I would like to thank the physicists and, and scientists uh, around the country and around the world who are engaging in discipline-based education research. They're publishing their works, so I get to steal and borrow and adapt all their great ideas to build on that base. Have I thanked enough people yet? <laughs> If I receive this award for creating and sharing and demonstrating a successful classroom environment, I, I would like to think that the credit really goes to the many communities working to support edu undergraduate education, maybe graduate education as well, and our collective attempts to learn more about how people learn, which so profoundly impacts all of our classes. Thank you all again for your support and recognition. I'm very grateful. <laughs>